Hey guys, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another Weird Wednesday and I figured what better way to kick off September going into October or the spooky month of the year than with a paranormal one. Now, low-key, I'm a little like nervous to do this because I am petrified of dolls specifically possessed dolls, but I mean it's one of the more well-known dolls out there and I've also been on a conjuring binge or have wanted to do a conjuring binge as of recently. So today's topic is going to be on the Annabelle doll, the very famous Annabelle doll that has her own movie series. So let's just kind of get into it. <laughs> so kind of the original story is pretty, of the doll actually, is pretty close to how it was shown in the first conjuring movie where the two nurses are talking about like their encounter with a doll. So the two nurses, Donna and Angie, are roommates and going through nursing school and Donna's mom gets her uh, Annabelle doll, which if you guys don't know how it actually looks, it is just like a normal plain old Annabelle, like a Raggedy Ann doll. Nothing too creepy about it, no weird smiley faces, no pigtails or anything, just a Raggedy Ann doll. And she gets it for I believe her birthday. And you know, the girls don't think much of it but then somehow it ends up um, moving around the room and like moving in places where it shouldn't have been moved to as well as kind of it like it's just mainly like moving posi like moving positions around the house or like it would be sitting up and then all of a sudden it would be lying down that kind of stuff so they didn't think too much about it and this was in 1970 and then um then they started getting the messages which were like help me, save us, save Lou and all that stuff and then that's where they kind of got a little spooked by it because it was written in what looked like child's handwriting, but also on parchment paper. Uh, but the thing is, neither Donna nor Angie own parchment paper. So that just, they don't know how the doll got it or where the, it, the parchment paper came from. Like, I'm assuming they probably like looked at the doll to see if like something had fallen out. And nothing did, so like I said, a little spooked by it. The final straw was when Donna woke up and it felt like a really heavy evil presence in the room. And she saw the doll, like I believe it was at the foot of her bed, with either like a red liquid in its hair or on its like hands. And then all of a sudden it just started to like pour out red liquid or blood. They never figured out what it was. And they finally got around to calling a medium. Now, I don't know, I have issues. Personally, mediums are interesting to me, but at the same time, I take everything that like a medium would say with a grain of salt. But like I said, this is 1970, so these things were taken very heavily and like with a lot of like thought into it. And essentially what the medium said was that the doll was possessed by a little spirit of a girl named Annabelle Higgins. And this girl had lived on, or not lived on, her like lifeless body had been found in the field, which is where the apartments now stood. So like the apartments were built over the field and that's where her body was found. So she's just been trying to find a place to stay essentially and wants to stay in the doll with the nurses because they were so nice. And because they're both nursing students, and you know, kind of have the maternal instinct going on to help people, to make them happy and comfortable, they agree to letting the, the spirit stay within the doll. Now that was kind of their biggest mistake because everything else started to go downhill from there. Now Lou, as you guys may have heard, was one of the messages that were written out saying save Lou. And Lou was their good friend. He um, didn't like the doll at all, thought the doll had an evil presence to it, had been bugging them to get rid of the doll ever since allowing Annabelle to remain in the doll. And um, one day he was asleep and he was suffering, he had been suffering from recurring nightmares for a while and he woke up to feel the, uh, like to see the doll like slowly gliding up his foot and up his arms and all of a sudden felt like the doll was suffocating him. That was one of the instances with Lou. The next instance was that he and Angie were in I believe the living room planning out a road trip or a camping trip, I'm not entirely sure and they heard something like move around, they heard rustling, and it came from Donna's room. So they thought there was a break-in going on, so Lou goes in to investigate, and there were no signs of a break-in whatsoever, but the doll was in the farthest corner of the room, and it was there when it wasn't there before. So what they did was that Lou walked up to the doll, and at the closer he got, the feeling he got that there was someone behind him, so he turns around, no one there, but all of a sudden, it wait, uh, I think it was like a hot pain appeared on like his chest, and when he took his shirt off, or like unbuttoned it, or however you want to do it, 
lifted it up. There were like scratches. I believe it was either three to seven scratches that were like bleeding and everything. And by the and after like a couple of days, the scratches had healed up and were gone completely. So this was kind of like the last straw where they finally like called in to like a priest and the priest called up the Warrens who were well known for um, their dealings with the paranormal and whatnot. So they sat down with the girls and I believe Lou and came to the conclusion that the doll was not um, human. The There is no way that human spirits possess dolls. It is something inhuman and something a little more than... than Demonic, demonic in nature. So there's that, as well as kind of their um, final conclusion was that had they called a little later, say within like two to three weeks, the spirit slash the doll would have either possessed someone by now, or had either caused serious damage to someone, or had killed someone by this time. So what they had called for was an episcopal blessing. I hope I'm saying that right, but at some point in this channel, you'll know that I can't pronounce anything correctly. So epis Gopal is what I'm going with, but if you guys know the pronunciation. And essentially what that means is it's a seven page like blessing essentially. It's not an exorcism or anything. It's um, what it does is that it fills the house slash apartment with like the idea of um, hope and life and positivity and God rather than going through and expelling the demon out of the house. So that was the thing that they had and they had a father named Father Cook who was rather uncomfortable with the idea, still do it, and even with that done, the Donna was still unsure, so she decided to go ahead and ask the um, Warrens to take the doll away from her. And they were more than happy to, they thought they could find some other way to help them out, and the doll was, taking the doll was one of them. Now on the drive home, they realized, like, Ed had suggested that they weren't going to take the interstate, because they don't know whether or not the doll was still malevolent in nature, if the episcopal blessing actually worked. So what they did was that they ended up um, taking the normal way, and turns out he was right. The doll, I believe, started to levitate, the brakes were screwy, would swerve in and out of places, and only then, and it only stopped when Ed parked the car, threw some holy water on it, and did the sign of the cross, and it just kind of stayed silent for the rest of the drive home. Which, I mean, pretty petrifying, not gonna lie, because cars in itself are pretty scary, so... So when they got home, Ed set it on a chair next to his desk in his office, and he saw the doll start to levitate, but after a bit it just kind of flopped down and remained inert. It didn't move anymore, but I guess I think after a few weeks or a couple of days, one of the two, the doll started to move around the house. Like, he had left it, like, any time they went out, they would leave it in one of the outer buildings of the household. So, like, it didn't mess with anything, but it would, when they got home, it wouldn't be there. It would either be sitting in the chair that it had placed her on, or on the, uh, like, in their bedroom, just chilling on the bed. So, kind of sketchy. And I believe now we're just gonna kind of get into the incidences. Now this was before they had placed a doll in like that fancy box that you see in the movie and as well as like in their um, actual museum. They had a priest come in and the priest picked up the doll, shook it around essentially and was like, you're just a Raggedy Ann doll, you can't hurt me. And Ed was like, that's something you shouldn't be doing. And Lorraine had even expressed her concern for him when he left. And then later that day, Lorraine had gotten a call saying that the priest had been in a near fatal accident trying to merge on the interstate where his car was essentially wrecked. The other incident was when the museum had all been opened up and the doll was chilling in her box and on the box it says positively do not open at the bottom. And one of the guests came in with his girlfriend and he opened up the box and shook it around, touched it, and essentially assaulted her saying to do her worst and it ended up where the um where ed had to escort them out of the house lock it back up and i think they had to do another like blessing on it because as you guys don't know the things in that museum need to get blessed i think every year or like once a month i forget the actual thing but around that time and as he and his girlfriend was driving home on his motorcycle they were cracking jokes about the doll and they had gotten into a motorcycle accident where the doll, um, where the motorcycle was destroyed and the boy had died on impact. And the girlfriend survived, but she was in the hospital for about a year after. So a lot of creepy stuff happening with this and I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. But as for like where it is right now, it's still in the Warren household, um, still in the box that gets blessed. You can't touch it, you don't open it. You probably, like, I think they even advise you don't look at it for too long. Um, essentially just treat it with as much respect as possible. 
because it is a doll and like I believe after Ed had passed, rest in peace Ed, um, Lorraine revealed in an interview that she doesn't even look at the doll because as Ed had said you don't mess with that kind of evil. She doesn't look at it because it's just not an evil she wants anywhere near her I believe. So yeah there's that. As well as kind of I believe and like according to Lorraine when she does tours and everything the doll is known to make like to growl and move when guests like look at it so like I want to go but at the same time I'm just but that is it essentially for this one I think I have an idea for my next one but I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do paranormal or true crime so if you have any ideas leave those down below and I'll be more than happy to go ahead and suggest them I upload these guys once a month typically on different topics and I call it weird Wednesday because they are a little bit off kilter from like the bookish stuff that I do so it is considered weird but on that if you like these videos hit like if you want to hear more information I will try to leave some of the links I left down below. I'm sure I left out some information in there, but for the most part, I think I, I hit them. But I will see you guys in my next video on Saturday. And until then, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Bye.